testimony of a God so good he'd leave his home in glory for the world he loved for the world that he so loved mm, it's not just a story yeah If I said I got here on my own, I'd be lying Cause my eyes have seen the goodness of the Father We're the ones He loves, we're the ones that He so loves Oh, and I can't deny it, oh no Say, I believe in the life of Jesus I believe that He conquered I believe in the resurrection I believe
I think you want to stay on your feet just for a second. Russ is going to say something, say something profound. profound. Good morning. Be good now. That's as deep as it gets. Good morning. Hey, you can grab a seat real quick. If you are here for the first time visiting with us this morning, thank you um, for coming and checking us out. My name is Russ. I'm one of the pastors here at Simple Church, and uh, we are glad that you are here. Today, um, since summer has ended, Sorry if you're a student. Um, summer has ended, and may maybe you didn't know, but you're supposed to be back in school. So since summer ended, we thought we would wrap up our summer series today that we've been doing for the last several weeks called The Fundamentalist. And uh, if you missed any of the services, I encourage you to go to the webpage and watch them because we talked about what we believe as a church or the, is the fundamental list of, of what a believer lives like and looks like and what it means. And today we're going to wrap it up with a message that we entitled, You Belong. And we're gonna talk about help, about helping people. One of the best ways that we can live out our faith is by being a help. And I'm not sure if you noticed not, but um, there's some crazy stuff going on in our world. There's, there's, it, it, it's messed up. And there's never been a greater time in our generation for the church to stand up and help. So hopefully by the end of this message today, you'll understand that helping people is an act of worship. And we got a little song that we wanted to do for you that maybe kind of get you in the mood to help someone. Help, I need somebody. Help, not just anybody. Help, you know I need someone. Help, when, when I was younger, so much younger than today. I never, I never needed anybody's help in any way. Now. But now those days are gone. I'm not so self. Sure. Now I thought I changed my mind. I opened up the door. Help me if you can. I'm feeling down, and I do appreciate you being round. Help me get my feet back on the ground. Won't you please, please help me? Now, and now my life has changed in oh so many.
appreciate it. We have this uh, crazy cool goal at Simple Church that we want to share with you today. And, um, and you'll see it, it goes beyond just a, a, a crazy goal. Uh, and, and here it is. We have this desire, um, this yearning. We, we want every person who walks through the doors to this place to not just feel welcome, but to feel like we've been waiting for them to arrive. When I was a kid growing up, um, we would travel down at least once a month to Dutzel, Missouri, to where my grandmother and grandfather lived. And it didn't matter what the weather was. I mean, it could be snowing outside, it could be raining, it could be hot, it could be cold. And we always knew this. My sister and I knew when we rounded the corner that we were going to see my grandmother and grandfather sitting on the porch. It was more important for them to greet us than to have the barbecue ready. It was more important for them to greet us than to have food on the table. And they would just, as soon as we pulled in the driveway, both of them are jumping out of their little lawn chair, rocking chair deal, trying to work their way down the stairs. And, uh, and you just, from before you even got out of the car and, and to the front porch, you knew that they were waiting. It was more than a, hey, you're welcome here. It was like they were anticipating us showing up. We, uh, we want that to be like that here. We, we want people to walk away from this place from their first visit going, you know what, I, I want to come back. And I, just, I, I feel like I, I want to at least come back one more time. And then after the third or fourth visit, we would hope that they go, you know, I'm kind of starting to feel like maybe I, maybe I want to be a part. I don't just want to come there, but I want to be a part of that. And then we hope that eventually that they'll go, you know what, we... Uh, we feel like we belong here. And if you are a part of Simple Church, we are asking you to help us, to help make this happen, um, to help make that experience happen for people who come. And if you're part of Simple Church and you have been around for a little while and you go, you know what, I'm not feeling that yet. We, first of all, apologize. And second of all, we want to get you there where you feel that way. And for those of you that are here today and you've come to that point in your journey that you have placed your faith in, your hope in, your trust in Christ, you've become a Christian, you've accepted him as your Lord and your Savior, uh, Scripture says this about you, that you have become a part of the body of Christ. So we could actually say that you now belong to the body of Christ. And when we use that word belong, we're kind of trying to use it in the same way you would say like you belong to your family. We want you to feel a familiness. And the reality of that statement is some of you today, maybe you look back and your family dynamic was not the best and you go, you know what, I'm out. I don't want, I've, I've done that thing. Uh, no, thank you. And for you, I would say, try to imagine the family that you wished you would have had that you wished you would have been a part of. So when you decide to commit your life to Christ, at that moment, Scripture tells us that we become part of the body of Christ, the family of God. It, 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 it actually says we become the church. You belong to the family of God. And as a family member of the body of Christ, as, as the church, one of the things that we should do is love people. And here's one of the ways Scripture tells us to do that. This is in Galatians. It says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Somewhere along the line, especially independent or non-denominational or interdenominational churches, somewhere along the line in the past several years, we've kind of pushed that doing good thing aside. And we talk about, well, it's not works. Works is not, that, that's not how you get salvation. And we're not saying that at all. But over and over in Scripture, you see because you choose to be in the family of God, a part of the family, because you choose to believe, over and over Scripture says, let us do good. Let us do good to all people. When you have an opportunity to do good, do good. And I want you to notice it says, do good to all people, everyone, everyone who walks through the doors. And it says, do good to them. Do good for them. My grandmother and grandfather used to always say, do good by them. They're good people. Do good by them. Treat people in a way that they want to come back. 
And, and one of the areas, and it was funny this morning, um, I, I met a couple this morning back in the coffee bar, and uh, it was so funny because I wasn't going to say where this was at, but Becky and I, uh, for a, a short period, for a few years, lived in Newtown. And I say that because I met a couple this morning, and, and they were like, yeah, we live out in Newtown. And Becky and I um, fell in love. I was joking with this couple that we drank the Kool-Aid. We got the golf cart, even though there's no golf course, and, and, and we drove around, and there was this little restaurant there that we would frequent, and we just fell in love with this restaurant. And anytime people would come, we would either get in the golf cart or we'd walk across. It was just right up the street, and we'd take them to this restaurant. And about the fifth or sixth friend of ours that we took to this restaurant, one day Becky said, you know, we, we've never really asked anybody else like what they think of this restaurant. And, and, and these are some friends that are, they're, they're going to be totally honest. So after we ate, Becky's like, what do you guys think of the restaurant? And they were both like, eh, which is a nice way of saying it, it was horrible, right? It was just, it was the nice way of going, eh. And uh, a couple weeks later, some family members came into town and we took them over to the restaurant. And we're like, here's what we usually get. You should get this. And, and they got that. And halfway through the meal, they were like, eh, this, is, uh, this is okay. Um, I'm like, it's okay. They have the best chicken salad around. And, and our family member said, it, it tastes exactly like that stuff that I buy at Aldi. I mean, it, it does. And we were like, oh, how could you say Aldi in a restaurant? We were leaving and we were walking by the kitchen and we did something we had never done before. We peeked into the kitchen. And lo and behold, there was a guy back there making chicken salad sandwiches. And you know what he was taking it out of? That same container you get at Aldi. I'm like, those folks, our, our family got good palate. I mean, they, they recognized where that came from. So we were like, and, and we were just like hanging out at our house. And, and one of our family members said, so you guys, you really like that restaurant? And I'm like, yeah. And, and he said, just, you know, I'm not trying to be rude or mean, but what do you like about it? Uh, what do you mean? He goes, because it can't be the food. I mean, it, it was just, it was, it was okay. Now, but that restaurant's no longer there, okay? So please don't know that I'm not. So they, they, we were, they were like, it's not that. And a few days went by and Becky and I went and we like put on that where you're like, we're going to really just, the two of us, we're going to enjoy this meal. We're going to savor this meal. And after we took a few bites, Becky goes, you know, this really, this really doesn't have the best food. But you know what they had? Everybody learned our name, and we would walk in. And we just thought it was so cool that we walked in, and before we were even seated, it didn't matter which server w w was waiting on our table that day and helping us. They'd be like, hey, Russ, you, you want a sweet tea, right? And hey, Becky, two large margaritas. <laughs> Maybe it was the other way, I don't know. But it was like, it was like they, they, they knew what we wanted. And, and there, there were a couple dishes that we would primarily go to and they would say, hey, are you, you, know, are you getting the Aldi chicken salad today or are you, are you getting this? And, uh, and Becky was like, you know, I, I don't, I've never really stopped to think, you know, the, food, the food's okay. It was a little high priced but it was, and it was okay, but it was this atmosphere. We always felt like they were anticipating us showing up and it made us want to go back and be there it, it, it like caused us to not be critical of, of some things that maybe it would have been easy to be critical of I want to look at what the writer of Ephesians says to those of us who choose to be Christ followers in Ephesians the second chapter verse 19 he writes this consequently you are no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Those of you that consider Simple Church your church, this is how we want you to begin to think about and feel about this place. Like this is your family, you're a part of it, that you belong here. That this is a place that you not only come to be served, but as equally important, a place that you come to serve as well. A place that you contribute. And I'm not talking about just finances. I'm talking about your energy, your gifts, your abilities. We want you to feel valued and, and cared for. And if I'm honest, I would want you to feel treasured. I, I, I never stop not wanting to go to my grandmother's. And my grandmother would always say, there's going to be a day 
when, when you boys, there's going to be a day when you girls, you, you get to become a teenager and, and you start dating and you get involved in sports and you, get, and you do this and you do that and there's going to be a day that you don't want to, want to come. So that's why we're trying to cherish these moments. And you know what happened? That day never came. I remember when I asked Becky to marry me. My family and her family obviously were the first to know. But after that, I said, hey, we got to drive down to my grandma's. I want her to be a part of this. It was just there, there was this love. We want you to feel that way around here. There's this passage in the book of Romans that emphasizes the practicality of belonging to the church. And it, it sort of shows us our role, if you will, as Christ followers. It's found in Romans chapter 12. The writer writes this, Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal. But keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, <clears throat> faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. This passage describes belong so well. In verse 9 and 10, it says, be devoted to one another in love. Devoted. In other words, take a genuine interest in people, people who walk through the doors. Care in a way that makes people want to come back, makes them want to return. Then it says, never be lacking zeal, excitement. Be excited, remain excited about God and about salvation and about the gospel and loving people. It says be full of joy and hope. And I believe what the writer was saying here, be so full of joy and hope that it's contagious. You ever been around contagious people? And, I'm, I'm not, and some of you are like, yes, that's how I got COVID last year. No, I'm not talking about that, okay? I'm, I mean, there's something about them that's contagious. Uh, Anytime we go someplace, if Becky and I go someplace, I know we're going to meet somebody. Because Becky is just, she'll, she'll talk to anybody. And, and she's just got this, this personality that, that, that people just are drawn to. And, and, and it's contagious. For the past 30 years, it's, it's made me a better person. Because it's like, I look at that and go, man, it's so cool. This is what Scripture is saying about us having joy and hope. It says, consider what people might need. And if you can meet the need, meet it. You know, last week, and, and, and so many of you know, we're a small church, and, and if you're new here, you'll, you'll, you'll get to know them. Um, Scott and Amanda have been a part of the church for a long time. And, and Scott is at home right now on hospice battling cancer, and he needed a ramp built to come out of the house. I mean, it was like Daniel and, and, and Julia and, and Amanda were having to like carry and do things and he needed a ramp. And I went to a guy in our church and I said, hey man, do you, do you think you could you know, help figure this out? And I thought, you know, my carpentry skills, obviously, I, I was like, aren't that good? I was thinking, hey, it's gonna take about you know, a piece of four foot you know, of lumber and, and this is all you gotta do. And uh, he went by and it turned out to be a bigger job. And he grabbed a buddy that goes to church here. And, and then they went to their small group and they purchased the material. And, and, and the two of them went out and they built this ramp. When they were done, they sent this picture. And I immediately look at this picture and I think, what an incredible act of worship, of worship to God by loving someone, by serving someone. By, do, by using the gifts that God gave them, the talents that God gave them. It says, bless and don't curse those who persecute you. Be happy for people when they're happy and good things are going on. It's so hard sometimes for us as humans to celebrate when just all hell is breaking loose in our life and we see someone else. It's so easy nowadays to get up in the morning and immediately go to Facebook and look at all the lies on Facebook of all the wrinkle-free lives. Hopefully that didn't surprise any of you, right? You understand that Facebook has been nine times out of ten is just what someone wants you to perceive or hear. It says mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. I want you to just imagine with me for just, just a few seconds. Imagine with me if there was a church, if we were a church, who treated everyone who walked through the doors this way that we're told to in Scripture. I mean, 
we, we should do that because that's what Jesus said to do. But there's something that goes beyond it. it, it, it it's even more than Jesus said to do. Did you know that if you can look at statistics and they will prove that people are more often drawn into a relationship with Jesus through the kindness and generosity of real Christian love than they are a theological debate or argument, a good message, a great song. The, the Greek word for love in verse 9 is agape, which means unconditional and sacrificial love. And if you've been here the last few weeks, you've probably noticed that word sacrifice keeps coming up in all of these things we've been looking at in Scripture. It's as if Jesus is saying, yes, I want you to sacrifice something. I, I want you to do that. I want you to put others before you. If those of us who are Christ followers, those of us who are part of the body of Christ, those of us who belong to Jesus, those of us who are the church, if we would treat people like that, who walk through the door, Man, I mean, for some people, they would come in and they would come back. They'd get up early on a Sunday morning. They'd drive past 10 or 15 other places because of that love. And, and what you have to realize is for some people, a Sunday morning, getting some love and attention like that may be the most or the only love or attention that they've gotten in days or weeks or months. And Scripture tells us to do that. We want to ask those of you who consider Simple Church to be your home church to do that on Sunday. Help us create this environment. Not just come and experience it for yourself, but make sure others do. We want you to come in here and worship. And I mean really worship. And by worship, we mean this, to respond to God with a grateful heart and a humble spirit, to sacrificially serve God by serving others, to love on others, because, see, true worship occurs only when our spirits meet with God. And our spirits meet with God's spirit when we're obedient to him. When we begin to live and love in a manner in which he instructed us. Worship's not about us. We shouldn't come into church seeking for all of our needs to be met. But rather respond to God in spirit and in truth. You know, all of us have been guilty of this, but I mean, how many times have you left a church service and, and your takeaway was something like, you know, the singers were a bit pitchy today. Probably not hear that much because these ladies can just wail. Um, or, or maybe you say, you know, we, we sang that song two weeks ago. Or, you know, the speaker, JJRS, they could have been better. The lights were too bright. The lights were too dim. The music was too loud. It wasn't loud enough. The door greeter didn't smile at me. The door greeter smiled too much, made me feel weird. If that's our takeaway, we are doing something wrong. I love what C.S. Lewis said. He said, as long as you notice and have to count the steps, you're not yet dancing. A good shoe is a shoe you don't have to notice. Good reading becomes possible when you need not con con consciously think about keys or light or print or spelling. And then he said, the perfect church service would be one we were almost unaware of because our attention would have been on God. If those of us who are Christ followers walk, walk with God and step with God and rhythm with God and begin to serve people and love with the attitude that he says to serve, it's incredible what can happen. People who are Christ followers will feel like, hey, I, I, I belong. People who aren't Christ followers will say, I want to come back, and I may not understand everything, I may not even believe everything yet, but I just want to come back. Becky and I have three adult children um, who, until yesterday, none of them lived at home. They were all gone. Uh, our youngest one is, is getting his master's degree right now, and he called a couple days ago, and he said, hey, I, I got accepted to do, I believe it's called an externship, and it's going to be at a school about two miles from your house, and, you know, I've been living in, in this house over here, and, and I, I'm going to be so far away, and I'm going to be spending so much time there and hardly any time on campus during the master's program, so I, I was just, you know, thinking it might be a good idea to, to, to come back home. And my wife and I were like, awesome. The, do the, door, the door's always open. And then he secretly, behind dad's back, 
went to mom and said, hey, are you guys cool with me? Come, like, like when I do come back, just act like I'm not even here. Just, just, just act like I, I, I don't even exist. And my wife was like, what is, what is act like you don't exist? What are you talking about? And he's like, I just want to make sure you and dad, and especially dad, is okay with it. So Becky and I are talking, and she goes, you know, remember when the boys all moved out? And then they would come back and visit. And, and you were mowing the grass. And you, you were about done, and they pulled into the driveway, and one of them was like, hey, dad, how you doing? And you waved, and you just kept mowing. And I was like, yeah, I was trying to get the grass mowed. I mean, who doesn't? I mean, who stops halfway with a job, right? I mean, come on. And she's like, and then when you finished it, you got the garden hose out because you're very, I'm not going to use the word she said, um, she, you're very, uh, it was a body part, you're very about washing things and cleaning things, and then you're, you're doing that for, you know, another 45 minutes or an hour. And then when you push the mower back in the garage, you realize, oh my goodness, there is a piece of dust on the garage floor, and you sweep it, and then, yes, you mop it. I, I have issues, okay? And it's like, and she's like, and then two hours later, they're getting ready to leave, and you come in, and you're like, hey, man, hang out for a while. I'm going to take a shower. And we'll come out and hang out with old dad. And I'm like, yeah, I remember that. She goes, R -r remember the times where they've come over and you're out and back and you're, you're grilling something and they show up unexpectedly and, and you're just taking the stuff off the grill and you walk in and go, oh, wow, wish I would have known you were coming. You know, I would have had some more. You know, if you want to eat mine or your mom's, you know, I go, go ahead. I mean, go ahead. You're welcome to be here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know about those times too. And she's like, hey, what about this one? How about when they key in with their own key and as soon as they unlock the door, you get down on the floor and lock it back before they turn the knife? No, that one didn't happen. <laughs> that was her. Um, <laughs> that was her that did that. And I went, yeah, and she goes, you know, I wonder if sometimes you are making them feel like it's not their house anymore. I wonder how many times you're just unconsciously making them feel like they're not welcome. I find that we as believers get kind of complacently comfortable at church sometimes and it becomes our little home. I mean, I'm not, not going to lie to you at all. Becky and I, this empty nest thing, rock on, dude. We were, we've been loving it. We were like, this is so, we got married when we were 18 years old. Uh, we made it a few years before we started having children, and then it's like one, two, and three, and we're like, oh my gosh, that's how this happens. So you get that taken care of, and then you're like, oh, and somebody tell us. There. And uh, we love that third one, though. And uh, so it was like, you know, now we got this time, and, and, and we're, we're loving it, but the thought of one coming back for a while, it's, it's, I'm thrilled. But my expressions haven't shown that. To the point where I had a child of mine wondering, is it, is it cool with that if we come back? And I started thinking, I wonder how many people come to the church and they start thinking, I mean, do they want me to be a part? I'd like to close today with this passage of scripture from the New Testament book of Acts. It's in Acts chapter 2. The writer said, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had a need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. They ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I want you to notice something there. It doesn't say he added to their number people to just become a part of an organization. He added to their number people who were being saved. I mean, wow. J just, just wow. Listen, I'd love for our church to grow. I really would. I, I want our church to grow. But way, way more importantly, I want the body of Christ to grow and the family of God to grow, and for people to have an encounter with Jesus, because I know this world is sick right now, and it's lost, and it's just messed up in so many ways, and I know that Jesus can help. So listen, because this is important. This message today is way, way more important and way bigger than and goes way beyond than just, hey, we want our church to grow and people to feel welcome. What you and I as a Christ follower, 
should be doing according to scripture is everything we just read and talked about. And I can't help but wonder, what if as Christ followers, what if everyone we encountered and everyone who walked through the doors of our lives, what if they felt that way? What if they felt like we had been anticipating them walking into our lives? What, what, what would we feel like if they, if, 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 what would it be like if they were like, I just feel like this, this person was like waiting for me, like, like I'm heard, I'm seen, I'm important. Jesus told us to live like that. And then he modeled it for us, what it, what it, what it looked like. And I can't help but would just, what, what, what could we do in our little personal worlds if we would just treat people like that? What if when people walked into our lives, it was like me as a kid pulling up to the driveway and seeing the look on my grandmother and grandfather's face. We were always so welcome. They were always like, it just gave you this feel like you, maybe they've been sitting there all day. Now that Becky and I are grandparents, we know what that feels like. And we find ourselves sometimes sitting out on the front sidewalk going, they said they'd be here a half hour ago. Where the heck are they? And then they get there, and my son and his wife get out of the front seat, and we blow past them like they don't even exist. <laughs> hey, where's Red at? And our son's like, seriously? He's our son. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. And it's like he gets out, and he knows. He runs in the house, and, and he goes to the pantry because he knows Mimi every time is going to have like a store going on in the pantry. And the kid just runs in there. And every time we find ourselves standing behind him crying and Quinn, our oldest son, and Kayla, our daughter-in-law, go, what are you guys crying about? We're like, he's in the pantry. Oh, this is so, what a blessing. He's in the pantry. Look, what, what's he going to go for? And we're excited. And he turns around. He's like, look, I got the fruit snacks. And we're like, yeah, we're celebrating. To the point of, to our other two boys going, Dude, you guys are weird. What, 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 what is it? And then he captured their hearts, and now they're weird. What would it be like if we live like that? Because I'm pretty sure, according to Scripture, this is how Jesus wants us to be. That we are just anticipating someone walking into our lives. This past week, our church was able to do some things because of you guys. We had two gentlemen in their small group build a ramp purchase the stuff. Earlier in the week, we ran into a 72-year-old homeless lady that has been living on the street for a year and a half now. And for the past two and a half months, she has not slept in a bed. And we encountered her on Monday. And you, as a church, because of what you do, and because of the generosity of other people that ended up getting involved, put her up in a hotel all week long, got her connected with a social worker through New Life Evangelistic Center, have an appointment where she's going to have and be able to get assistance and help. And, he, and here's the deal. She said this to Becky and I when we went and talked to her on Friday. She said, I don't understand why you guys are doing this. I, I, I don't, I just, I, I don't, I don't get it but I like it. And then she paused and she said, it's been a long time since I felt loved. And I can't help but wonder how many people that we encounter, it's been a long time since they felt love, since they felt heard and seen and important. Again, I want to grow the church, I do. Something has happened on the inside of me in the past month that needed to happen a long time ago and I have become I don't know man excited challenged gripped I want to see that but way more importantly I want to see people meet Jesus and the scriptures tell us how that can best happen and it's by us loving and living like Jesus and having this mentality to people come on I may not have all the answers but I'll walk with you and try to find them. I want to close today, 
And I want to ask you a few simple questions. And I want to challenge you when you go home today to ask yourself these questions. What can I do better? What can I get better at? What can I get involved in? What can I contribute? Because, see, we need you to take action. The world we live in needs Christ followers to take action. The world doesn't need any more Christ followers complaining on social media. And it doesn't need any more Christ followers standing up telling what they're against. The world needs Christ followers standing up saying, I love you. I care about you. I will sacrifice for you. I believe in my Jesus so much that I'm actually willing to stake my life on living how he told me to live, no matter what it makes me look like. And I'm going to open my arms and do that. That's what the world needs. The world needs to see a true picture of Jesus. And this has always been and always will be the true picture of Jesus. Open arms. Loving on people. Let's pray. God, today we come before you and we thank you for sending Jesus to die, for proving to us how much you loved us. And God, thank you for showing us your power when you raised him from the dead. Jesus, we thank you for the model that you lived out for us. And I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit that we would get better, that we would get better at loving people, that we would get better at noticing people, that we would get better at listening. God, I pray that we could put our agendas down and just love on people and let you be God and just see what you might do in us and through us. God, help us be a church that opens up and embraces and loves. Father, I pray today for people who are here who maybe they haven't come to that point in their journey where they've decided to trust you and give their life to you, and maybe they have a really good reason or a really deep hurt. And God, I pray somehow, some way today that they would feel your love. And if it was a hurt by a person or a hurt by an organization called the church, God, I pray that you would show them that that was some human beings, it wasn't you. And that they'd feel your love, your passionate love for them. And God, I pray that before they walk out of here that they'd say, God, I believe, I trust you, I put my hope and faith in you. God, thank you so much for everything you've done in our lives and what you want to do through our lives. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen.